Welcome to the NCRS Insider, bringing you into the NCRS world with your host, Steve Thaser. Today on the NCRS Insider, we are continuing our detailed look at the 1970 Corvette LT1. We are talking about the foundation of a C3 Corvette, the steel frame. This particular frame design actually had a 19 year run since it was used on all C2 and C3 frames. There were subtle differences made throughout the years due to body mount differences, bumper attachments, transmissions, and so on, but generally it's the same frame design. However, by the end of the C3 run in 1982, the frame was quite dated. Comparing a 1980 frame to a 1984 C4 frame is like comparing apples and oranges. In the 1970-72 NCRS Technical Manual, information on the frame is found in the chassis section on page 238 of the 6th edition. The section is rather brief, but it does touch upon all the pertinent items related to the frame. The steel frame is a two-piece box design made out of a high-quality steel. The two sides were welded together to make the box, but the welds were not done in a very neat manner. Welds were not continuous, and there's a lot of slag on the steel. For a proper restoration, this should all be left as is. The majority of the C3 generation steel frames are going to have some degree of rust and deterioration. The amount of deterioration for low mileage clean cars can be minimal, but it can be quite severe for well-used vehicles. The disadvantage of the box design is it allowed water and debris inside the frame that is very difficult to remove. Over time, this can cause rust to form and can severely deteriorate the frame. Believe it or not, this particular frame appeared to be okay on initial inspection. However, once the large amount of undercoating was removed, it was discovered that tin closure pieces were riveted to the frame over the deteriorated areas. There was severe deterioration in front of the rear wheels and behind the left front wheel. These two locations are the two most common areas for rust. However, other locations were present on this one. All the bad areas needed to be cut out and new steel welded back in place. Not an easy job, but necessary to save this frame. There are replacement sections of steel that can be purchased, but I decided to fabricate new pieces and weld them into place. There is also pitting of this frame, but not to the point that is a major concern. Now that it is coated with PRR-15, that should slow the deterioration down significantly. Another rust preventative measure that can be done is coating the inside surfaces of the frame. This is not as difficult as it might seem. Eastwood makes a product called Internal Frame Coating. It easily coats the inside of the frame by inserting a flexible tube into the frame that attaches to the aerosol can. It is important to plug the various holes in the frame to avoid making a mess. The paint is not cheap, but worth the investment. Another problem area on the frame is the bottom side of the front cross member. Since the curved section sits so low, it can take the abuse from things jumping up from the road or more commonly just using a jack in this area. The metal is not that thick, causing the metal to cave in quite easily. Stay tuned for a future video addressing this particular problem. There are differences in the 1972 to 72 frames, depending on whether it is in an automatic or a manual car. The first is the transmission cross frame mount. For a four speed car, the cross member is fixed, meaning it is welded to the perimeter frame rails. On an automatic transmission, the cross member is bolted to the side rails. The cross member is generally not painted with this configuration. The second difference is the clutch cross shaft tower that sits on top of the frame behind the left front wheel. This is only on a manual transmission car. Frames are painted semi-flat to semi-gloss black with a DuPont 640 enamel-based paint. It is dip painted hanging from the front cross member, so dips and runs are acceptable, but not always present. There should not be any body color paint visible on the frame. On the front rail, there is a white painted stencil, typically upside down. The numbers in the stencil consist of the frame part number and the assembly date. The stencil letters are 13 16th Gothic letters. For 1970 until late 1971, the stencil is on the outer side of the right side straight rail. 
from late 1971 through 72 is located just behind the front right tire. This example is from a 1970 Corvette. The GM part number is 3974600, which is for a manual transmission. An automatic would have the last three digits of 601. The suffix is the A.O. Smith part number, which is 81. In 1970, the A.O. Smith part number could be 80, 81, 82, or 83. The assembly date is March 21st, 1970. There are commonly green grease pencil numbers located on the side of the frame near the body mounts. The number indicates the quantity of shims needed at each body mount. At the front cross member, there is often a vertical white or yellow line where the center brake line clip is located. There is also a serial number stamped on the frame. Typically, they are found just in front of the rear body mount on the left side. Our LT1 had a very faint serial number, which is very hard to make out the actual numbers. Between body mount one and two, a white foam cushion sits between the frame and the body. It appears the originals were actually still in place on our car when the body was removed, but a bit more yellow than white once they were cleaned up. There are a number of holes and slots in the frame for attachment of various parts and pieces. The openings at the side rails are from a side exhaust attachment. Because we replaced portions of the frame on the sides, some of the openings were gone. Although we do not have side pipes, to make this a correct restoration, holes were put back in place. There are eight body mount points on the frame. These are often referred to as mounts one through four, starting at the front with one on each side. Mount number one is just behind the front wheels, which is a bracket welded to the side of the frame, which a bolt and nut penetrate through. Mount number two is not far behind mount number one. The body bolt screws directly into a captive nut held in place by a bracket welded to the top side of the frame. Access to this bolt is through the inside of the car. Mount number three is the same design as number two and is just in front of the rear wheel. Access to this bolt is from a small compartment in the wheel well. And mount number four is just behind the rear wheel and is a similar design as mount number one. To secure the body to the frame, quarter inch aluminum discs sit on each of the mounts. Above the discs are steel shims that are used to level the body when installed. When doing a body off restoration, the body mount bolts can often be very difficult to remove since they are prone to rusting. For our project, bolts one and two came off with not too much difficulty. However, at mounts three and four, the bolts were a struggle with the bolts either breaking off or having to cut them off. Rusty bolt extraction can be a long and difficult process. Since our body mount discs, shims, and bolts were in pretty bad shape, new ones were purchased. There are a number of additional steel members and brackets that attach to the frame. Two front extensions bolt to each side of the frame with two bolts and washers. These support the bumper side brackets and the bottom front cross member. The front suspension connects to the frame at four points. The upper control arms attach to the studs in the frame at the raised front tower. The lower control arms attach with three bolts on the bottom side of the front cross member. Just behind the front cross member are two short extensions that support the engine mounts. At the rear kick up of the frame, the differential cross member attaches to the underneath side of the frame. Just behind the differential cross member is the gas tank cross member that supports the front of the gas tank. Looking at the scoring sheet, the frame has the potential for a 10 point deduction on originality and eight points for condition. Since we touched on the body mounts in this video, they have the potential for a two point deduction for both originality and condition. Well, that concludes our overview of the C3 Corvette frame. I hope you found this video informative and helps you with your own restoration. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button below so you don't miss all the great issues to come. See you later.